one of you here tonight on our Christmas Eve service. And we're going to go through the life of Christ. And I want it to be a wonderful time for us to remind ourselves, what is the reason for the season? Uh, There are a lot of things going on in our world today that we might forget what the true reason for Christmas is. But you cannot spell Christmas without Christ. And so we are here tonight to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior and Lord. And I hope that tonight you can say for, for with all of us that, you, that He is your Savior and Lord. So we're going to look at Scripture, we're going to have songs, and everything will be up on the, on the screen. So first we're going to sing uh, 123, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. years ago when the creation account happened then you had a problem enter into the world sin came into the world and death by sin and because of that God had set forth a redeemer a messiah to come that will come and defeat 
the devil, defeat sin, defeat death. And this one is the one that we worship here as he comes. In Luke chapter number 2, verses 1 through 7, it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria, and all went down to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now we're going to sing 127, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. And when the Lord Jesus Christ was born, there in the middle of nowhere, some shepherds heard a wonderful announcement. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We're now going to sing the first verse of 132, Angels We Have Heard on High. Looking at Luke chapter 2, the angels will have gone away, but yet the shepherds are left with the message. The message that the king of kings is now on earth. So what do you think they are going to do? We see in verse number 15, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the angel said, or the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad this saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherd. 
But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now we're going to sing 138, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Just like the shepherds, we should also tell of this wondrous story. In Matthew chapter 2, some other people are now aware that Jesus Christ is born, that of the wise men. They came from the Orient, and they're watching and beholding a star in the skies. Like a similar star that we saw recently when Saturn and Jupiter collided and we had this magnificent display in the sky. But yet, even more so is this star that they saw in verse number 1, it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. 
To understand these gifts a little bit better, we're going to sing uh, 166, We Three Kings. amazing to think about Jesus Christ being born into a helpless estate, born in such a poor estate. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God in the flesh. In Isaiah it says, a virgin shall give birth to a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Why did Jesus Christ have to come? For instance, He truly did not have to come in and of Himself. In all reality, the Godhead was complete from eternity past to eternity future. So why did He have to come? Well, when man fell in the garden, every single man that was born of man is now a sinner by nature. Unfortunately, we come into the world and we don't have to be taught how to do wrong. It comes naturally. If you don't believe me, definitely look at children. Definitely look at grandchildren. That will teach everybody about the fact that everybody is born a sinner. 
But in all reality, why did Jesus Christ came into the world? He came into the world in order to do what you and I could never do. Live the life that we could never live. Perfect in every aspect. He who knew no sin. He took upon His sin on Himself and died in our place. As God, He could not die. As man, He could not live perfectly. But the God-man, He lived perfectly and still died on the cross. As we see in Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation, and took upon Him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of God. Men, that right there is Christmas. That right there is Incarnation Day when God was made flesh. But here we find verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus Christ died for all of our sins at that one moment in time, and He died on that cross for all of us. We see that, but yet He did not stay dead. He is not a martyr that stayed in the tomb. He is not one that was executed a criminal that stayed in the tomb. He rose the third day. And because of that, we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We're now going to sing one day, 170, one day. Just think about all the words that we're singing right now. And this is just the fullness of why Jesus Christ came into the world.
story does not end with His resurrection or ascension. Where He is right now is He is in heaven on the right hand of God the Father waiting for the day for His return. And there's so many things that we're, we could look forward to, but His return is definitely one of them. If we are in Christ, that means we put our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. He will come back one day for us to be in heaven with Him. And then one day He is going to come back as the conquering King. He came first as the sacrificial Lamb. But then He's going to come back as the conquering King, conquering everything on the earth. He will set up His own kingdom which shall last forever. And so we're going to look at Revelation chapter 19. Picture this with me. The Lord Jesus Christ coming back full of glory. And those who are in Christ are going to be with Him. Verse number 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath and the wrath of God, Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of kings and Lord and Lo Lord of lords. Amazing. The Lord Jesus Christ coming back in victory. We're, we are going to now sing a second coming hymn, although it's known to be a Christmas hymn. Just think about the words as you're singing them. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Now the question that we all should ask ourselves is, well, Jesus came into the world. He died for all the sins of the people of the world. What should we do about it? What is God's will for my life? And God's will for each and every one of us is first and foremost that we put our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior. It was a long time ago when I did I was there in a, a classroom in middle school, public school of all places, and I was reading my Bible all the time, and, and then all of a sudden, I was there working on a computer assignment, and the Lord tugged on my heart. I understood that I was a sinner. I understood that Jesus 
not only died for the sins of the world, that's kind of large, but no, He died for my own personal sins. And so, when I know, knew that, I understood that, I put my faith on Jesus Christ. I took Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. To as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. We see in Romans chapter number 6, verse number 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The first part of this verse is a terrible understanding about what the condition of man is. The wages of sin, that which we deserve because of our sin, is death. Ultimately, death is swallowed up in the lake of fire. But the gift of God is eternal life. The gift. For a gift, you do not have to earn it. No, you know, Christmas has a, a terrible understanding because of the fact of, okay, we have a Santa Claus and if you're good, you get gifts. Well, no, you, you don't really get gifts. You get a reward. If you're good, then you get a reward. No, this is a gift. We can never be good enough in order to go to heaven. God is holy and cannot have unholy people come to heaven. But here's what He did. He sent forth His Son to be made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Because I put my faith on Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior, Jesus Christ has forgiven me of all of my sin according to His own righteousness. So before God now, I am as righteous as the Lord Jesus Christ is. That's called salvation. If you put your faith and receive Jesus Christ tonight, if you have never received Christ as your Savior, do so tonight. It's very simple. You ask the Lord, Lord, please save me according to what Jesus Christ has done for me. But notice with me in this verse, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life. That's life that never ends. When do you receive it? Well, it's when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. And guess what? You can never lose that salvation. Once you receive everlasting life, you have life that will never end. Praise the Lord. But here's the thing about it. What should we do now? If we are saved, if we have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior, what do we need to do? We need to practice the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a wonderful thing that we can do whatever God wants us to do now that we are in Christ. It's just a magnificent thought. If any of you are not in Christ, I beg you, do so tonight. Receive Him as your own personal Savior. For those of us that are saved, but yet you might say, I don't really practice the fact that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Rededicate yourself to Him. And each and every day, submit yourself to His reign in your life. Praise the Lord that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why we celebrate. We're going to sing our final hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. This is one of my favorite. It just shows forth what salvation is like.
for you all to be here tonight. We thank each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you with your Christmas tomorrow. I'll pray and then we will be dismissed. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your grace. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world. Help us never to forget why He came. And if there's anybody here that is not saved, that has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior, may they do so tonight. And Father, we ask you to each one of us, may we submit to your authority in our lives for those who are in Christ. And may we have a blessed tomorrow. May you bless each person here on their Christmas morning. I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You are